what does this villain want with Absolute Superman? Guys, I just got done reading Absolute Superman number one, and bro, it is awesome. Like, this new Absolute Universe is killing it. Absolute Batman was great, Absolute Wonder Woman was really cool, and Absolute Superman, the comic that I was the most skeptical about, he proved to be awesome as well. So let's talk about it. Now, this issue is written by Jason Aaron, a great writer. The artwork is done by Hoffa Sandoval. And let me just get it out of the way. The artwork by Hoffa Sandoval is incredible. Like all the pages in this comic just jump right out at you. And there's like one page where Absolute Superman is fighting off against the Peacemakers and he looks so cool, man. The design is dope. Now what we see in this issue is some flashbacks to Krypton and Krypton in the Absolute Universe is different in a few ways. See, there's a class system and the high class is scientists and the low class are like laborers or engineers people who work with their hands people of steel and in the absolute universe Lara and jor the biological parents to Kal-El, Superman, they are a part of the lower class, whereas usually jor he is a part of the higher class, and he's a scientist, and he's the one who warns everybody about Krypton's destruction. And in this universe, he does the same thing, and we see him go through the mines on Krypton and discover what I'm going to call Kryptonite Acid. And we see one of these higher class individuals who is very like rude get like disintegrated by this kryptonite acid and it seems like Krypton is on the brink of destruction. Now Lara, she is like a farmer so that's different. I actually really like Lara in this issue, how she acts, her demeanor, and towards the end of the issue, we see jor return from his mining, and he's all scarred up, and Lara is like, what's going on? And he tells her that it's happening. Krypton is going to get destroyed, and we see young Kal-El walk out. Now, my theory here, in the main DC universe, only Kal-El and, you know, Kara make it out of Krypton's destruction. They make it out in a pod and they arrive on Earth. But in the Absolute Universe, I think jor and Lara will survive. They have no reason to stick around because they're not part of the higher class. So they could ditch Krypton, get Kal-El and head on over to another planet maybe Earth, and uh, maybe something happens along the way where jor and Lara still get separated from Kal-El, but they are still alive, which means that they could factor into the main storyline. I think that could be pretty interesting. Now, in the present day, we see Kal-El, Superman, he is in Brazil, and he is still fighting for the oppressed. You know how Superman always fights for the oppressed and protects people? Well, he's doing the same thing here. He is protecting the Brazilians and just people, miners in need from these peacemakers. So, we have these peacemakers, and they work for a villainous organization called Lazarus Corps. Now, who is the director of Lazarus Corps? I don't know. Maybe Absolute Lex Luthor. Or maybe the villain that I showed at the beginning of this video. We'll get to who I think that is soon. But from here, we see a dope action sequence where Absolute Superman goes up against like an army of peacemakers and absolute Superman he's not able to control all of his power so his suits which talks to him controls it for him and if absolute Superman uses too much of his power he'll blow up or at least that is what the story gives off for now like in this action sequence we see Superman using heat vision it is really cool like he's going all out but then his sun energy starts to like flare up and it looks like he's going to explode before he like backs off and when you think he's safe when you think he's gotten away from the peacemakers an agent of the Lazarus Corps 
gets the jump on him. Now, who is this agent? Well, this agent is none other than Lois Lane. Yeah, Lois Lane and Superman are against each other in the absolute universe, and if it is revealed that the director of the Lazarus Corps is Lex Luthor, then that means Lois Lane is working for Lex crazy so yeah Lois she handcuffs Superman and that ends the issue technically now there are two other like epilogue pages that get me really interested one of them shows the Kent farm now in this universe does Kal-El crash into earth and is he taken in by the Kent family Pa and Ma Kent maybe most likely but what I think happened is yeah Pi Ma Kent found Kal-El, took him in, but then the Lazarus Corps killed Pi Ma Kent. And it may be revealed that Lex Luthor is the director of the Lazarus Corps, or maybe the director is actually Brainiac, because remember the villain that I showed at the beginning of this video? Well, I think it is Brainiac, because in one of the epilogue pages we see in Nevada, basically Area 51, a villain just like behind. We don't see the villain like straight up, but we see this villain in a chair, and this villain looks like Brainiac, honestly, and he's looking at his monitors, and he now knows that Superman is here, and he is intrigued. This villain will go after Superman, because it seems like this villain has a lot of like artifacts in his room. Like in the one page we see, we see a lot of like bottles in his room, and remember, Brainiac, he collects planets in bottles. For example, the Bile City of Condor. So yeah, all of the clues in this page are just letting me know that it's most likely Brainiac. And I would love to see Brainiac be the first big villain of Absolute Superman. Like, that'd be so cool. And yeah, guys, I enjoyed this issue. There was so much to love in this first issue. And I highly recommend it to all Superman fans. A lot has been set up, and Superman is still a character full of hope. A superhero who fights for the oppressed. All of the core elements of Superman are here, but the story is fresh, and it is exciting. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10. And yeah, DC Nation, tell me your thoughts on this issue down below. What are your theories for Absolute Superman going forward? And yeah, if you want to stick around, here are my thoughts on another subject. This storyline never continued. But why? See DC Nation, today we're looking back on a DC initiative from 2021, a very controversial one, DC Future State. Now, this initiative went to the far future in a DC universe that was changed a lot. But let's look at a comic in this initiative called Future State Justice League. It was only two issues, but it was a pretty good comic. I enjoyed it. And this Justice League had a lot of legacy heroes, like sons and daughters of core members of the Justice League. For example, Jonathan Kent, the son of Superman, he was on the team. We also had the Brazilian Wonder Woman, Yara floor she was actually a big breakout character during this time dc has not done that much with her since then but she was pretty cool during future state but in this justice league comic there is a storyline that is teased that never happened it's teased in one panel in the panel it talks about how a member of the justice league betrayed the team and what happened after this was the justice league they separated they left the hall of justice and the justice league was no more for a long time until the future state justice league came together and a big focus of the storyline was the future state justice league keeping their secret identities intact because in this storyline that never happened where a Justice League member betrayed the team, this traitor released all the identities of the Justice League to the world and to their enemies. So the whole secret identity dilemma 
it was a big problem, and it makes sense to keep your secret identities to yourself, but when you're on a team like the Justice League, you wouldn't expect your, like, contemporary or your friend, your peer, to share your identity or be a traitor. Now, who would be the traitor in this storyline that never happened? Well, let's think about it, alright? So in the panel, we see Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, the Trinity, so it's none of them, which is good. We also see Martian Manhunter and Green Arrow, so it's not those two, but some core members that are missing. Green Lantern. Now, Green Lantern, more Hal Jordan, he technically betrayed the Justice League more than entire DC Universe back in the 90s when, you know, he became Parallax and almost destroyed the whole DC Universe with Zero Hour. So, him being the traitor would not be that interesting. Now, Hot Girl, maybe. I don't know if that's that interesting either. They could also do a spin on uh, the infamous DC event, uh, Armageddon 2001. Remember that event where it was revealed that Monarch is Hawk? And it really didn't make that much sense. It should have been Captain Adam. So, maybe it actually, maybe in DC Future State, the traitor is Captain Adam. Maybe they make that right. Like, Captain Adam would have been the perfect traitor, but what I think would be the best scenario, the best traitor, and the most interesting one, in my opinion, would be making the Flash the traitor. They never done that in any Justice League story that I remember. And the Flash is usually the heart of the Justice League, especially when Wally West is on the team. So to make Wally West the Flash the traitor, that could be interesting. Now, I don't think him becoming a traitor, just him like joining the villain side would be flat out interesting, but a writer could jump on board and find some way to make him the traitor. And actually, if we go back to DC Future State and look at the Future State Flash comic, Wally West, he gets taken over by one of the four horsemen of Apocalypse, Famine. So, if Famine takes over and that causes Wally West to become the traitor, that would actually make sense. Now, did fans like that storyline where Wally West became like Famine and killed everybody? Not really. I actually liked the storyline. I thought it was interesting. I actually liked most of DC Future State, but DC fans that I remember didn't really like it back in 2021, especially the Teen Science Academy book. So going that direction would not be good, but the idea of making the Flash the heart of the Justice League the traitor of the Justice League in some sense could be interesting. Tell me your thoughts on that down below. Who do you think out of the core Justice League could be the traitor in the Future State Justice League storyline? Do you think Joshua Williamson or any other writer will continue this storyline in the future? Probably not because it seems like a lot of the storylines from the DC Future State Initiative have been buried or forgotten, but this one, this is the only one that I would like to see continue.